Welcome to Hannity. Buckle up. Subpoenas, threats of contempt, calls for impeachment of pretty much everyone. And oh, yeah, obsessive hysteria over decades old tax documents that reveal nothing new and absolutely nothing illegal. And the media is going nuts again. Oh, that's right, because Mueller didn't come out the way they wanted. Let's move on to the next conspiracy theories. And speaking of which, maybe Hillary Clinton colluded with China to release them because she said, China, hope you're listening, release the tax returns. And there they are in the New York Times. Uh, I know facts are hard things for some people in the left and the media mob to understand. Donald Trump's still a billionaire. Yeah, he's still president. Uh, we all knew that what happened in, in New Jersey in the casino business, yeah, it kind of went south. Businesses fail every day. The Trump organization is still an overwhelming American success story. But this kind of vitriol just represents what the Democratic Party has become. They, they, we now tax, <laughs> you know, we're going to get that for the next two years. We need a special counsel. Mueller, we need tax experts. You know, this is a political cabal filled with sore losers that are now bordering on rage psychosis that, can, that couldn't accept the results of the 2016 election, now refusing to accept the results of Mueller's investigation, and now more on hints than ever. So tonight, after more than being cooperative in a broad 22-month witch hunt, President is rightly saying enough is enough, and he's putting his foot down. Remember, he didn't say or use executive privilege one time. He allowed everybody in the White House to talk to the special counsel. 1.5 million documents. This week, the White House did order, finally fighting back, former counsel Don McGahn with a not-to-comply order as it relates to the congressional subpoena. After all, he was already interviewed by Robert Mueller for a whopping 30 hours. The guy's talked out. He has nothing left to say. And meanwhile, under threat of contempt of Congress, the attorney general, Barr, he's refusing to release the full unredacted version of the Mueller report to congressional Democrats because he's actually following the law. And because the law was passed by Democrats, Barr, by the way, was not required to release one single letter, no word, no phrase, nothing of the Mueller report. And the only redactions to the full report include, oh, Grand jury information, language pertaining to ongoing cases, investigatory sources and methods. Can't let that out anyway. And according to Press Secretary Sarah Sanders, the White House might order the DOJ to block Robert Mueller from testifying on the Hill, which kind of disappoints me. I got a lot of questions for Mueller. Why did he appoint Andrew Weissman and a band of Democrats and Let's see, people that withheld exculpatory evidence in the past and people that represented Hillary Clinton, nobody that donated to Republicans. I like a few of those questions. Why did Robert Mueller not touch Hillary Clinton's bought and paid for dirty Russian dossier? I know he was busy. He was looking into Farrah violations, bad loan applications, incomplete tax returns, taxi medallions. Sure, he's too busy to investigate Hillary's bought and paid for Russian lies and propaganda to impact the 2016 election, which was part of the mandate of what he was supposed to be doing, not taxi medallions or Farrah violations. Watch this. Should we take the president's tweet from this past weekend as an order to Bill Barr to not allow Robert Mueller to testify? I think that's a determination to be made at this point. I think that's but the president's. It, I mean, but that's the it. president's feeling on the matter, and the reason is because we consider this as a case closed, as a finished uh, process. And I, again, I think that so, most what, Americans think that this is finished. Well, most Americans do. Sanders is right. It's over. It's done. From now on, it's only noise. Two and a half years, Democrats, media mob, the self-obsessed super patriots like James Comey in the deep state trying to rip this country apart over a hoax, a conspiracy theory with no evidence and only anonymous sources. Even Senate Majority Leader McConnell put it this way. They were hoping for a national crisis for political gain. That's so patriotic of them, isn't it? Take a look. It's been two weeks since Attorney General William Barr made the 450-page report public. This investigation went on for two years. 
it's finally over. They told everyone there had been a conspiracy between Russia and the Trump campaign. Yet on this central question, the special counsel's finding is clear. Case closed. Case closed. Now, the senator's laying out facts. Democrats could not be more detached from truth, reality. Well, let's look at speech. Speaker Pelosi. She's not really speaker. She's speaker in name only. It's, a, it's Speaker Ocasio-Cortez. And then in speaker in name only, Pelosi. Take a look. On the floor of the Senate, Senator McConnell is reported to be saying, doesn't matter to hear from Mueller, case closed. Case closed. No, I don't think so. I don't <laughs> think so. Just as a matter of observation, that's just not a fact. The case is not closed. She may want to check in with Speaker Casio cortez because the case is closed. Uh, Pelosi went on to declare that President Trump is goading her into impeachment. That's what he's doing. You figured it out. Another conspiracy theory. Just when you think they're done with conspiracy theories and lying, they just pull it out of thin air. These people are amazing. They should write movies. Take a look. Trump is goading us to impeach him. That's what he's doing. Every single day, he's just like taunting, 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 because he knows that it would be very divisive in the country, but he doesn't really care. Just wants to solidify his base. Now, for Pelosi and her Democratic colleagues and the media mob, oh, it's not about, in any way, talking about or legislating or improving the lives of you, we, the American people, bettering the economy, making the world a better place, more safe, more secure, more prosperous. It's always about scoring cheap political points with their radical base. Well, let's look at a new poll. 57% of Democrats believe President Trump is guilty of treason. Well, they've been lied to every second, every minute, every hour of every day on every news channel, except prime time here. So, you know, what do you expect? Of course, they're going to believe that lie. According to multiple surveys, vast majority of these Democrats are total Americans, though, they're against impeachment. Without a doubt, the far left socialist extreme Democratic Socialist Party, they are out of touch with truth and reality and can no longer accept basic fundamental truths. Same reason why so many Trump haters are refusing to admit a simple disturbing truth as well. The Trump campaign was spied on. It happened. And tonight, as Byron York pointed out, it's not a question of whether spying took place. Question is uh, how much spying and by how many people. Now, even former National Intel director turned fake news CNN hack James Clapper begrudgingly admits this simple truth. Looks like spying to me. Well, it was spying. Take a look. There are protocols and standard standards for using a, an, an agent, and I'm sure that's the case here. So you're saying this was not done lightly? Well, no, they, it's never done lightly. Uh, was it, I'm sure spy, it, was it spying? Well, it, yeah, I, I guess it miss, meets the, defin, the dictionary definition of, spy, of uh, surveillance or spying. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, when our federal government send in, sends in undercover agents, oh, like a hot blonde bombshell that's really flirtatious and makes herself available to George Papadopoulos for the purpose of extracting information out of him. Yeah, that's called spying. And when our own FBI uses a series of secret informants to set up meetings and then surveil Trump campaign aides and trap them into saying things that they can't say because they don't know, that would be spying. And when Carter Page, he's going to join us in a moment, had his calls and emails tapped by our own federal government after they committed a massive FISA fraud with the bulk of information in the application being Hillary's Russian dossier, that would be spying too. And what's worse, the basis for that spying was Hillary and her dirty Russian dossier, a document Comey and others signed off on. Do you know at the top of a FISA warrant, I just learned this today, uh, it says verified. Hmm. It was never verified. It's unverifiable. This document, totally unverified. We now know filled with Russian lies. New York Times even suggesting all of it paid for by Hillary may have all been Russian disinformation from the get-go. 
And thanks to a brand new breaking report from the Hills, John Solomon, we now have one more piece of damning evidence that the Obama administration knew that the dossier was a fraudulent political hack job well before Comey used it. And they used it for the basis of the FISA application. And according to John Solomon, 10 days before that first FISA request in October 2016, the author of that dossier, Christopher Steele, confessed to Obama's deputy assistant secretary of state, quote, his research was political and facing an election day deadline. State Department memorialized this conversation in a written statement, which was subsequently hidden from Congressman Devin Nunes during the course of his entire House Intel investigation. The shocking revelation is now shining light tonight on a series of texts between FBI officials, Page and Strzok, that referenced an effort to speed up the completion of the FISA request, likely, we know, used against Carter Page. We're going to get back to my monologue on this and hear from Carter Page in a minute. But first, well, at this point, we should remind you that despite what you just saw and despite all appearances, Brian Sims is not a mentally ill panhandler or a vagrant with a drug problem screaming at strangers. Looks like it, but he's not. He's an elected lawmaker. He represents central Philadelphia in the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. He's a star, by the way, in the Democratic Party. He's hung out with Pete Buttigieg. He's got a robust social media following you can check. In 2014, NARAL, that's the abortion clinic lobby, gave him a top award. Here's a picture of him with NARAL president, Elise Hoag. The American Bar Association also gave Sims an award for something or other. In 2013, when she became ambassador to Japan, Caroline Kennedy asked Sims to deliver the keynote at her swearing in. In other words, in the modern Democratic Party, Brian Sims is a totally and completely mainstream figure. He's also, as you just saw, a frothing extremist who's willing to threaten teenagers and attack them for their skin color simply because they disagree with him. Sims calls other people racist because they want fewer black women to abort their children. The whole thing is totally deranged. But it's entirely okay with Democrats. The Pennsylvania Democratic Party has not even commented on what Brian Sims did. Nobody at CNN is denouncing him. In fact, CNN's website doesn't even have a story about this as of this hour. Why would it? He's their kind of politician, so it's not news. In fact, it never even happened. Remember that the next time they call you immoral. It won't be long. 